Hello lovelies. So the end of February of this year, I participated in a pattern test. So if you don't know, a pattern test is basically when a designer takes a new pattern they're developing and kind of puts it out there to a small pool of participants for them to try it out and see how it works for them and give feedback. For this pattern test, I was working with Wildflower Designs. I found her via Instagram and she put out a call for a new pattern she was developing, showing some pictures of samples she made of the garment. And it looked really cool, so I wanted to give it a try. So I signed up to be a pattern tester. Now this actually wasn't my first time applying to be a pattern tester. I had applied to some other indie designers that I follow on Instagram. And usually that seems to be the way that many of them gain their pattern testing pool. But for whatever reason, I wasn't accepted. And some designers will have sort of a requirement of what they want. So often you'll fill out a form and you'll let them know your basic sewing skills, what kind of tools you might want to use if it's like by hand or machine, and then also what size of the pattern you're going to make. So usually they'll provide a size chart. And so from there they'll sort of decide who they want because they want a broad range. So if everybody's making an outfit in size 14, that's not really going to be helpful for them. They need people to make it in size zero, in size 22, just to make sure the grading of the pattern is correct. That's a big issue in some cases. So I applied to test the pattern and I was accepted and I started on a journey. So it may seem like I know what I'm doing because I sew a lot of things and usually they turn out okay. But the truth is I'm kind of pattern phobic. I use patterns from time to time, especially for things like stays. Actually, I drafted the pattern for this one because I find that a lot less intimidating. I like drafting patterns when possible and it's not for something too complicated because to me, sometimes it's hard to understand how other people visualize things going together. And that's really what reading a pattern is. You're taking a garment and seeing how someone else puts that together, the order of operations, all the little bits and pieces. Whereas for me, I quite often take a garment I want to make and sort of break it down in my head, look at similar garments I already own and the kind of shapes there and throw something together. So complex patterns actually really intimidate me. And this was a skirt, which skirts are very easy typically. I always say in this channel, I like just start with a skirt. It, with a basic formula, you can make almost any skirt. This was not a basic formula. This was actually a pretty complicated design, which I really like actually. So the skirt itself is kind of like an 18th century petticoat because it has a front half and a back half and you sort of sash it around your waist. But the kind of fun modern twist to this design was that the back half also has a sort of lacing panel like girdle that goes across the front. So you could adjust it during pregnancy, you can tighten it or loosen it, it's, it's very adjustable. And then the front half just sort of cinches around that as loose or as tight as you need. And it also had these very big 18th century style pockets, but they were sewn into the garment instead of tied around your waist as they would have been at the time. Just to make it a simpler all-in-one modern garment, even though it has that sort of historical vibe. There were actually two views of the pattern and one was a lot simpler. It still had that 18th century style, but without that lace panel front. Um, but I really wanted to try the more complicated one because I thought it was a cool idea. So I decided to give it a shot and it was tough. And I made a pretty big mistake. <laughs> it actually wasn't a big mistake, but it felt like a big mistake about halfway through and that sort of put me off it for a day or two. I just wasn't in the right headspace to kind of get back in and figure out how to get this together correctly. So come along for this mystical journey and see this really cool skirt. If you've ever made a PDF pattern, you'll know there's a good deal of carnage. And this one had quite a few bits and pieces. So cutting apart and putting together the pattern and then cutting out the fabric, it definitely took several hours it was a big part of it and I probably should have known then that I was in over my head but I persisted 
And yes, I am using coasters as pattern weights. They're harder to knock over than candles, but they're pretty heavy and they're multi-purpose. I will not leave rings on my coffee table. I decided to make the pockets out of a contrasting fabric because I had just bought a remnant at the local fabric shop of this super cute cat fabric. And when you can have secret cat pockets, you know, why wouldn't you? So what I didn't realize here is I wasn't supposed to stitch over the top until I had put the binding on, but it didn't end up being a significant issue and I fixed that for the second pocket. But you know, as you can see, I was already a little confused by the pattern just because there were quite a lot of steps and the descriptions and the illustrations were all from that perspective of how another person sees this coming together, which isn't necessarily how my brain would process or see it coming together. So that was quite something to overcome. This pattern uses a lot of interfacings and tapes that you make yourself from the fashion fabric. So this is me ironing the tape for binding the pocket edges. As you can see, I still don't have an ironing board, but a towel will suffice. And actually all the interfacing in this project I think was good practice for me because I've never really done interfacing before and I probably should have. And in the pattern instruction, she explains that you can buy separate interfacing fabric or you can just make your own. So this waistband panel ended up having three layers of my fashion fabric to interface it. And here is where I made my big mistake. <sighs> For all the tapes and tabs and just long rectangular pieces, I somehow along the way lost the piece that was the loops for the back waistband. Not realizing this, I found whatever handy piece of tape I made that looked to be about right and used that to make my loops. While by no means a tragedy, I did realize pretty quickly that I'd made a big error and uh, put me in a bad headspace. So some hand sewing was necessary to cure this. This is just the gathering thread that I'm using for the front panel just to help me ruche it all together to make that nice pleated effect at the top. And here I am fastening it to the front waistband, which I didn't mess up, fortunately. So I'm just sort of gently moving the gathers to help arrange them more evenly and more prettily so that the skirt hangs nicely. I did this front panel after I messed up the back panel because I just needed a simple win. There are two or three days between me messing up the back girdle lacing and doing this front panel because I just couldn't approach this project. I couldn't figure out how to fix the mistake I made, but I knew I made one and I just felt kind of burnt out. I hate sewing on a deadline. but. By giving myself a simple win, it really helped me get my sewing mojo back. And I think that's what I needed. I needed to do something that I felt confident in. I know how to gather. I know how to pin together a waistband. So let me just take care of that. And then all the other problems won't seem quite so monumental. And my theory was correct. Once I got the front together and I could kind of wrap it around myself, more like an apron, I could envision how this dress was going to look, and that was very inspiring. However, I also learned that I really shouldn't work with a ribbon dangling from my sleeve because that just invites and provokes rage and attacks from the little panther that lives in my house. And then, amidst the pile of recycling, I found the missing piece. So now that I knew what piece of my pattern was missing to make these tapes, 
I could go back and fix this. And it's quite a pain because the inner placket was sewn in and the layers. So I had to take apart both sides of this and reattach a bunch of stuff. But I decided it was worth it to get it right and to also do this pattern test fairly because the whole point is to follow all the instructions and use all the pattern pieces to a T so that you can see exactly how the pattern functions and give feedback based on that. So I couldn't improvise with this one, even though I love improvising if I do use a pattern. I had to take this duty very seriously and I was getting a free pattern in exchange, so fair is fair. then everything was as it should be. This is all quite a few layers of fabrics, so it was a little bit fussy to work with. It's very thick, and so I had to be very careful about how I pin it so none of the layers could slip, and also how I sewed it. So I lengthened my stitch a little bit and just kind of took it slowly so I wouldn't jam up my machine because it's not very heavy duty. One side of the waistband needed to be whipped down so that the stitches wouldn't go all the way through. So I was quite happy to pick up my thimble and do that. I do find that since I got a sewing machine, sometimes I miss hand sewing. And in fact, the sort of purple stays that I model this skirt with, I did all by hand just to have a little quiet project to work on in the evenings. I found that while I love the convenience of the machine, hand sewing is quite meditative and I don't want to lose that in my life. Then it was time to attach the pockets to the back half of the skirt. I just did the side attachment at first, I have to go back later in this process and stitch it into the waist to keep it flat, but at this point I'm just sewing it there to make sure I get the placement correct. And actually one of the pockets I did need to pull out and do again. So it was good I didn't attach all the top as well. Then the front and back pieces have to be attached sort of from the hem to the mid pocket region and then the extra fabric from the side of the pocket needed to be over stitched. So right here I'm just lining all of that up by laying the front and back pieces together. I really need a bigger cutting table to not have everything bunched up but it was effective enough and it just sort of helped me lay everything out. While the skirt still needs hemming, it is in a semi-wearable state. So as you can see here, the front lacing panel worked out. Now that sort of back panel is one of the things that didn't get graded throughout the pattern. And so the very smallest sizes found it a little too big and then sizes over like a 10 found it a little bit too small because it doesn't give you full coverage even when laced up. So that's one of the alterations that Melanie is making to the pattern, but it's still very functional. And as you can see, it goes with a, a variety of outfits, history bounding or just sort of a modern school teacher. And you get access to the pocket through those side slits. It's a good length, very swishy and full. So as you can see, I eventually got myself together and wasn't too much of a mess. And it really is a nice skirt. Now, there were a few little tweaks that Melanie, the designer, um, 
made, we made a Facebook group actually, where we could leave our feedback as we went, ask questions, share photos. And it was really nice to kind of see the experience of the other pattern testers because I had a few small issues and I thought, well, maybe it's just me, maybe because I'm not great at patterns, I'm not understanding something. But there were actually a few little kinks that did need to be worked out so Melanie sent us a correction for some of the waistband um, we realized that the lacing panel didn't need to be graded it was kind of based around one size instead of being graded smaller or bigger for each size so some small changes were made thanks to that group discussion and I assume there might be more fine-tuning and tweaks now that we've all submitted our feedback as well so this design will be available soon in Melanie's store and I will link her Instagram account. I love a big flowy swishy skirt and I think it's worth making. I might make this pattern again, but do the view A, the slightly less full version of the skirt that doesn't have the complex waistband, just cause I think it'll go a little quicker. And because such a big skirt is a little harder to wear every single day, just because I always close them in car doors. But, it will also still have those awesome huge pockets, which is such a rarity in women's clothing. So very much to be appreciated. And yeah, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be good. I would make this pattern again, for sure. The full version that I did takes, uh, in my size, like five and a half yards of fabric, which is quite a lot for a skirt. But the view A is only about three yards, so... That's also something to be taken into consideration. Another reason why I might do the view A, just because I don't have to have as much fabric. So if I have something left over, I can just kind of throw it together. So I think that'll be good. So thank you for watching. And I hope you found my journey to be interesting, maybe helpful if you're thinking about doing a pattern test or interested in this pattern now too. And uh, maybe entertaining as well. <laughs> If you enjoy my channel and my content, I do a lot of sort of historically inspired clothing, but also some costuming. I have a few exciting things coming up. My next video coming like the first week of April is actually going to be my Regency day dress, finally, in which I also had to follow a pattern for at least, yeah, for most of it. So another fun adventure there. But I have some exciting content coming up for the spring and summer, including some more self-drafted projects and just some sort of uh, ideas about how to integrate historically inspired pieces in your everyday life. So if you're interested and feel like you'd enjoy that content, please subscribe. You can also hit the alert if you want to get an alert every time I make a new video. And you can comment and let me know what you think of this skirt that I made and also what you do to get out of a pattern slump. Because... Yeah, they can really be tough. Just even not even a pattern slump, but a creative slump. If you're a creative of any sort, you probably have been through them. And they're rough. So please let me know what you do. So I have some ideas for next time the slump hits. Bye.